Hey YouTube, it is Trinity Productions, trinityprosound.com coming at you again with another Take It Apart video in our video series of where we take speakers apart. Um, this time we are bringing you a FBT. It is the, uh, the new uh, CS1000 and um, it is a tall skinny speaker on a pole. Um, out of the back of this thing we've got our skinny speaker um, that mounts up on the pole and I'll put this down here so we can get a little bit better view of it. Um, what I wanted to do with this is um, not do a video until we had some really positive um, results on it, um, which we do have. Um, I was not skeptical, but um, you know, with all the other speaker systems out that have the lower bass bin that sits on the floor and then the top box that goes up on the pole, um, getting the new um, the CS1000 from FBT and putting it through its paces. As you can see, the, the grill here is a little bit scuffed up as this has been out in rental. And uh, we've also got a pair of these in a local church now that is about a congregation of about 200. Um, with one of these per side. So we wanted to have some um, good, you know, experience with these things as far as a rental is concerned, what they're doing, what they can do, um, and then look at, you know, what, they're, what they can't do. And um, really have found that um, this uh, particular speaker uh, and the bass bin and the top box and everything is really quite versatile. Um, sounds really good and has got some incredible output. Um, we're going to do this video in two parts. This is going to be part one with the take it apart and then what we're going to do is um, go back into the church venue and what we're going to do with that is just play some tracks um, through it off of their um, Yamaha keyboard, record it with the zoom and match it up to the video um, as far as the output is concerned so that we're not using a camera mic or a lapel mic. We're going to end up recording at um, 96 kilohertz, 24 bit on the zoom and then sync that audio up um, to, the, um, to the video. And um, if you've got headphones or some decent speakers at least you'll get a better idea of what it sounds like. You're really never going to be able to fully understand what it sounds like over a video anyway. Um, but with that said, let's go ahead and get into the specs here. Um, on this CS1000 and it is, um, it's in their Virtus um, series of speakers. Um, applications that they've listed it for, which we kind of all know is live sound and uh, portable PA, clubs, houses of worship, theme parks, DJs, corporate events. Corporate events would be great because for talking heads you've got this little tiny speaker and um, just unobtrusive and the output out of this thing is just amazing music playback and sound reinforcement in small to medium sized venues. Anyway, the features of it, it's two way modular design, um, subwoofer, 12 inch speaker, uh, six three inch speakers in this um, that have a neodym neodymium magnets on them, class D amplifier, 600 watts RMS to the low frequency driver, 400 watts RMS to the high frequency driver. It has um, built in DSP with eight presets for different playback and um, live scenarios. Um, the satellite um, volume can be set in eight steps. It's got a Neutrix speak on um, for the satellite connection. Um, 110 horizontal, 30 degree vertical, so it really puts the sound where it needs to go. It's um, birch plywood enclosure, completely manufactured in, um, in Reconati, Italy. So um, gone over the specs, 40 to 20,000 hertz um, is what it's rated. Um, max SPL is um, 125 dB with 129 peaks. Um, crossover frequency is at 180. So it's right in there with everybody else. You know, everybody's like it, you know, some of them are 160, 180, some of them are up a little bit higher. Um, as far as the weight of the entire thing, um, with the top box, this is um, at 66 pounds. So um, it, um, and you'll see why um, once we get this thing opened up um, into the, uh, the video. Um, one of the things, and we'll show some um, pictures uh, in this um, because I won't be showing the live setup until we get, but I mean with the pole mount that comes with this standard M20 thread, um, with a pole mount that goes here into the top into the M20 
and then extension pole. Um, what they've done with theirs though is, as you can see here, they've got these little um, brackets on there that the speaker slides over and then there's also a little spring push pin that adjusts it up and down um, so that when you get higher up you can angle it down a little bit if you need to. Um, it locks the speaker on. So what we're going to do is just show you that real quick and can be set up um, rather quickly. So it just goes together, locks in, done, and then goes up on the top box and it locks in. You have to pull the pin um, on it to be able to pull it out and unlock it. So um, it's got the brackets on the back and then the connector, the spe uh, speak on connector for the speaker. Um, this pole also then extends up so that you can lock that in place and get some pretty good height um, out of all of these poles uh, once it's up on top of the, um, the low frequency driver in this, um, this FBT speaker system. So with that said and gone over the specs, what we're gonna do is um, take apart this box. One of the things that I wanted to show you real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and slide this back in, lock it in, and then we're going to turn this guy around. So portability wise, um, this is one of the slickest ones that I've seen so far um, because the power cord goes in here, um, the poles go in here, the speaker goes in here, and then the speaker cable, connector cable to the to the low frequency box goes in here and it locks everything in place and then they've got a cover um, that is available that goes over this as well. But this little guy just pops out and everything basically will pull out of there. I only have just the speaker cord in there right now. But um, all goes back in, nice neat little package and you're not going to lose anything. So um, really pretty slick. Um, with what they've done with that. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to pull the low frequency driver apart first, take a look at that, and then we'll get into the high frequency driver or top box um, mid highs and take a look at that with the, uh, the six drivers on there and the, the neodymium speakers that are on that and then we'll kind of do some sweeps and everything on it. And then we'll end up um, with this, we'll play a little bit of um, music through it as well in this video if you don't get a chance to listen to part two um, that we're going to end up um, including in this video series on the FBT CS1000. Okay, so we've got the front of it opened up as you can see and see that it's a 12 inch paper cone, um, paper surround, suspension on it. Um, it is ported um, in two locations. The grill on this thing, um, FBT does something a little bit different and they've got a nylon weave kind of mesh in there um, for the uh, protection of the speaker driver and also um, just covering it up, making it uh, you know not as see-through and a more professional look. Um, probably 16 gauge steel on this one though, a little bit thicker than some of the other ones that we've seen. So we'll go ahead and set that aside over here. And um, on each side, we do have a handle. Um, it's kind of a rubberized grip on it. They've done a really nice job, and it's a good feel of the handles. And it's somewhat um, centered as far as the weight of the box is concerned, so that when you lift it, it doesn't tip forward or lean back one direction or the other um, when it is lifted um, up. And then we've got the, um, the M20 um, up on the top, which we'll flip up here that you can kind of see. And then if we continue to roll it over, there's the little release button um, up there that pops open and releases the, um, the speaker on the inside of it to pull that out. As you can see, there's little um, indents that they have milled in here um, into the plywood. And that is for stacking another base bin on top of this. Um, that is one of the really nice features that this particular, the CS1000 has, is that you can array two of these per side. So you can double them up and then they make a bracket that you can end up stacking um, two of these speakers per side, utilizing both power amplifiers, both low frequency boxes, so that you can have double the length of this for an event, double the amount of subwoofers for an event, and then on the back, 
we'll get that as we get into the amplifier, but there's a setting on the back um, that you can put it into array mode and um, changes some of the DSP and EQ on everything, um, but to align those a little bit better sonically. But um, that is a slick feature that if you have one of these things or two of them and you ever want to do anything bigger, um, you don't have to repurchase. Um, you can just end up getting a couple of more and having, you know, at least another 3 dB of gain, um, which is like double um, the output power. So um, slick idea. And then they've got little rubber feet um, on the bottom of it as well so that when you do sit it down, as you can kind of see there, um, do sit it down on the floor that um, it's not going to mar up a floor or scoot all over the place due to the uh, to the low frequency energy. So anyway, what we're going to do is pull the uh, the 12 inch driver out of this thing. We'll take a look at some of the cabinet construction on this, um, being it is um, made with uh, birch plywood and um, they've done a um, kind of a satiny black spatter coating all over the thing. Um, typical for a lot of the um, speakers um, these days. Um, they don't Duracoat, but uh, very rugged, durable finish. Um, kind of common what the FBT does with a lot of their um, different lines. So let's go ahead and get the 12 inch driver pulled and take a look at that in the inside of the box. As we're getting things pulled here, one of the things I wanted to mention is that the woofer as well as the, um, the grill is all on um, machine thread type screws on thread certs uh, so that they don't go directly into the wood, that they go into the little thread cert so that um, you're not going to strip things out and um, elongate holes and things like that as well. Um, should you ever need to get in and service these things, highly unlikely. We just, with a lot of the product being manufactured in Italy like this, um, with FBT, it's like the reliability is just amazing. So we're going to go ahead and pop this thing out and um, take a look at the box. So we are opened up and have the speaker out. And so what we'll do it is a ceramic magnet um, on a stamped frame construction. Probably 15 pounds as far as weight, maybe a little bit more. Um, just standard speaker. As you can see here in the, uh, the video, um, magnet-wise, it's pretty big um, as far as a ceramic and uh, just standard, you know, paper surround and, and you know, cone suspension, and that is the speaker. So we'll get that set off to one side here. And so as you can see internally with this, though, um, with the leads coming out, they have um, got some dampening, um, some, like, uh, egg crate foam in there um, in the bottom and then also throughout the back. Uh, the amplifier heat sink portion is exposed to help with cooling um, of the, uh, the amplifier when it heats up so that that uh, whole back of that amplifier is a, um, a huge heat sink um, for this particular speaker. Once we get the Amplifier pulled out, we'll go over the connections and the, and the DSP settings and things like that um, that are shown and indicated on the back of the box. But um, as far as construction is concerned, um, it is, um, looks like it's probably 12 or 13 layer Baltic birch. It, birch, it is glued and screwed together um, on the inside. Uh, really nice, solid um, construction. And with the um, acoustic dampening material in there, the foam, um, not a whole lot of resonance out of the box when I'm, sorry, but if that's too loud, when I'm slapping it here. So um, very nice construction. Um, the lead that is um, coming off here is the top box lead that goes into the um, little, um, turn that around there and you can kind of see the speak on connection in there that um, goes up to the, uh, to the top box. But um, that is it for the lower bin um, ported, as you can see, for uh, various sonic reasons um, with this uh, base bin low frequency driver um, on the uh, CS1000. So um, what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to take now and pull apart the top box 
and take a look at the drivers and everything in that. And then the last thing we'll do is pull the amplifier, get it back together, and then uh, run some noise through it and a little bit of music with um, the zoom recorder on it. So we'll get this opened up and um, show you what that's all about. So we have got it opened up and um, looking at all six of these little three inch speakers here. They are on kind of a um, butyl surround, um, so they're not standard paper cone suspension on them. Um, the grill, um, again, looks like this one may be 18 gauge, but um, same type of scenario. They've got a little bit of foam on this one as well as the, um, the nylon backing on it so that you cannot see the speakers on the inside of it and gives a really nice kind of pro look. Um, the speaker does have the engaging um, detents on both the top and the bottom, so it really doesn't make any difference when this guy is slid back into the bottom box of which orientation it goes. And, um, but again, very nice construction. Screws on this one though are standard um, hex head Phillips screws um, into the wood. So if you ever have to take it apart, just be careful putting those back in so you don't strip out the holes. Um, what we are going to do though is go ahead and pull this and kind of look and see how they've got these um, speakers wired up. My guess is there's probably some type of series parallel configuration on these guys to maintain the impedance to the amplifier, but we'll open this up and take a look. Okay, so we got it opened up, the leads are off. Um, cute little speakers, you know, stamp little baskets on them. They are sealed around the back edge there um, for what you can kind of see um, on the box so that it keeps it um, a complete sealed um, air suspension on these guys. And, um, but um, very light, you know, probably um, maybe a pound, pound and a half on these little guys. So as far as the configuration is concerned, they've got it so that these three speakers are wired together in parallel. Um, so that that ends up producing about a three, two and a half, three ohm load, but then they're series together. So it's about four or five ohms um, that it looks like it's probably presenting to the amplifier um, with the configuration that they've got these things wired together on. Um, as you can see in the back here though, they've got it so that um, one side is separated from the other side as far as the, um, the acoustic suspension on it. And uh, the connector comes in here and then we've got cables going off to these guys and a cable going off to these guys um, in the bottom of the box. Standard just push-ons um, for the connectors themselves and uh, the whole wiring assembly um, goes through there. They do have, and I don't think you can see it here, maybe you can, but they do have some dampening material um, inside this box as well um, to help with uh, resonance um, of the box. So good deal. You know, that's the, always nice, especially in a wood enclosure. Um, that um, it just helps keep the sound going where it needs to go. So um, really, you know, nice little speakers. Um, get this a little bit closer here that you can kind of see what those little guys are all about. And just the standard leads um, and the little FBT sticker um, with the part number on the back. So um, not too much to it um, with the way that they have put this together, and I'm sure all the, the mathematics and physics and everything that goes behind it to be able to keep the directivity of it with the 30 here and then the 110, I think it was this way or 100. Um, just, it's amazing what these little guys can do. Um, they rate these um, on the frequency response of being able to still get full frequency response. We've walked a lot of these um, tall skinny speakers and even though some of the high frequency drops off you can still even at a 180 still hear what's coming out of these things with fairly good sibilance and clarity so um, it, they've done a really nice job um, with this and the construction of this um, the CS1000 from FBT is um, it's top notch being that it's you know a wood box and um, what they've done with it so Good job. What we're going to end up doing now is pulling the amplifier out, taking a look at that. There's probably not going to be a whole lot we're going to be able to see on that other than looking at some of the inputs, outputs, and then some of the presets of what that um, nine, what is it, 900, almost a thousand watts? Yeah, it's a thousand watts. So um, a lot of power um, for a little package like this. So more power, more better, more SPL. So um, we'll go ahead and get this little speaker back in and then we'll pull the amplifier and, um, and 
get this video wrapped up. Okay, so we got the amplifier pulled. Um, half of the screws are on uh, threaded insert machine screws, the other half are on wood screws. Um, but as we got it out, you can see here in front of the amplifier assembly here, and then heat sink housing here, and not much to see. So as not to disappoint, we pulled the screws and or pulled the back housing off. So, so we can get in and kind of take a look at what this um, power amplifier that's producing a thousand watts um, is all about. So um, there we have it. Um, it is all um, switch mode power supply. Um, power supply section is over here on this side and coming in and comes up all the way into about here. Um, we've got uh, semiconductors here and then these are going to be the um, power amplifier semiconductors on the heat sink there. Um, up at this end here we've got the input as you can see there, and all the DSP that comes down and feeds into the board um, that is on um, some multi-pin connectors that plug in. And so this whole circuit board here um, does remove, so you can pull the knobs off and something ever happens to the DSP or so the amplifier or whatever, um, it is pretty much modular um, that it can be changed out pretty rapidly um, if need be, um, rather than troubleshooting to the, um, the component level. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the, uh, the inputs um, on this amplifier. Let's get it into the camera view here. And so I can talk about this and um, hold it at the same time and see. Um, we've got our XLR input, a link through output on it so that when we go off to another speaker or to another array, um, that that can happen with that. Um, here we've got the array push button, so you can go on or off with that. Um, if you've got another unit that is being um, coupled to this, um, there is a mic line input, so if you use this for a little PA on a stick and don't have a little mixer, you can set it to mic level, plug in a mic to it, and use it for announcements and things like that. Um, this control here is the uh, level. Um, and goes all the way from infinity up to um, plus 6 dB, plus 35 mic, mic level. Um, there is also presets, 1 through 8, and then there also is a separate level control here um, with this red indicator, red knob, for the subwoofer level. So you've got the adjustability of bringing the entire gain up and also bringing up or down the, um, the subwoofer level depending on um, what you're doing with the, uh, with the box and what kind of venue you're at. As far as the presets are concerned, we've got eight different presets. And so the first one here um, that it sets up is for what they're calling original EQ. Then they've got one for live EQ, one for vocals, one for a loudness contour, boosting highs and lows. Uh, they've got one that is for a DJ and then a DJ boost, which will probably boost the low end. Seven set for a monitor and then eight um, set for um, coupling up to a wall if you've got the thing pushed all the way back um, up against a wall. Um, changes the EQ presets on it. Um, standard IEC power input on it here and uh, on and off switch and then there is a fuse right there on the, uh, the IEC connector. Um, this is all put down on a aluminum, cast aluminum um, heat sink assembly and that's what the back cover is as well. So this all bolts up and provides one massive fanless heatsink assembly to this 1,000 watt amplifier. So weight of this thing is probably about seven pounds. Weight of the back is probably a couple, so it might be 10 pounds overall um, as far as the um, amplifier is concerned. So very nice little package, um, bolts up nice. It's got what, eight, nine screws holding it all together um, in a nice, neat little package. And then it's got a seal around it so that when it goes into the back of the box here, um, that it seals it up um, acoustically. Um, so no air from the, uh, the movement of the low frequency driver pops out the back. So good job. So with that, um, we're gonna go ahead and get this guy back together and run a little bit of noise through it 
and a little bit of music recorded with the uh, 96 kilohertz 24-bit sampling on the Zoom. Okay, we've got our rig set up. Um, we're about three feet out in front of it. I've left the, the grill off and then position this um, just vertically where it kind of would be if it was set up on the pole so that we're getting both of these into the, um, the spectrum of the camera and also the, um, the iPad as well. Okay, so we've got software set up. Um, got a pretty bad glare on this, apologize for that, but it's the lights and um, you can kind of see my voice and what it's doing. It is just set for third octave. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to 48th and let that run, and we're gonna go ahead and turn up the, uh, the pink noise. As soon as we uh, turn it on here. So as we just ran through on the, um, the trace, you can see as I turn it up and start really exciting the speaker, It does go down to about 50 and um, all the way up past 16K. And we're gonna go into third octave now. Just kind of look what the thing is doing in third octave, get that out of the way. So fairly flat within a few dB. Um, we've got more audio here in the 80 to 2.5K range with what we're doing, but that just may be where we've got things positioned. I'm gonna rotate the mic up a little bit more. Still pretty even um, as far as the um, the plot is concerned with spectrograph um, all the way across the band, no matter which way we're paint, pointing the omni mic. But fairly flat. Let's go ahead and we'll do um, some sweeps on it. So right now we're generating 30. my volume control on my box and so we're going to just take it up a little bit 36 you can see the speakers starting to be maybe you can see that starting to be excited and moving 50 turn it down a little bit there 63 you can see as things move up can't hear up that high but it's still reproducing we're seeing that here on the meter you can still see my voice and everything on it so um, it does what it says it's going to do so we'll turn this down a little bit more and bring it back down to the low end so once we get down you can kind of see we're generating about 80 dB, 82 dB. But as we start going down below 57, now we're starting to drop off. So down at 45, we've dropped off probably half the volume, so we're probably 6, 9 dB down.
So there is the FBT CS1000. The thing sounds fantastic. Um, the low frequency driver in this um, is, um, is very punchy. Um, they've done a really good job with the porting in it and the bass reproduction in it. Um, to me, it's not colored a whole lot, um, so that the response you get it on it is fairly flat um, out of it and out of the top box. Um, as we saw in the traces, you know, kind of across the band, um, music playback and things like that, even in a live setting where we've set it out for a band and things like that, and in the church setting that it's in, um, with the one per side, um, the thing just sounds stinking fantastic. And those we ended up setting the volume levels on them um, less than half of what the gain is on the back. And uh, that will, you know, these things will blow the congregation of um, 200, 225 um, in that building. Just it'll rip their heads off if they wanted to turn it up and do that much with it. So anyway, enough said. Um, what we're going to do now, go ahead and put the grill on and then we'll get the zoom set up and um, run a little bit of music through it and sync the zoom up to what is um, kind of going on here um, with the output of the music um, on the uh, FBT CS1000. Okay, so we've got spectrograph and RTA set up. Um, this is the zoom that we are going to use. Um, go ahead and power this thing up. We're just using the standard mics in a 90 degree XY kind of or Y configuration, whatever they call it. Um, loading up now. So nothing on it. Um, we are, as you can see here, let's get it in focus. We are set for 9624 um, on the display for recording. So we'll get that synced up. We are using the mics and um, we're going to just sit that hopefully right there on top of the camera or the mic. And we are going to hit record. And we are recording. So go ahead and turn up some audio here. And you can see what it's doing over there on Spectrograph and um, RTA. We'll t tighten this up, go to 124th.
stop this, I'm going to change it into one of the DJ EQ settings. So that is DJ boost number six. So we're going to put that on six just to kind of see what it does to the um, overall frequency response with that. Song. Difference. You can see a lot of the, a lot more of the low end is being sent. And you can tell just in the studio here the difference. through these and just do one one at a time so there is original this is live a mid boost on that this is vocal off the low end gave some more presence and clarity to the top box this is loudness loudness there. DJ. DJ. Monitor. Took some low end out and gave a little bit more presence to the top box. Wall placement sounded like it ended up doing a little bit more boost on the low end. A little bit of EQ on the top box. That's in DJ boost there. distance we're running you know 90 I'm gonna turn it up So pushing 106, 107 dB just at this close distance here, but you can kind of see what this speaker is capable of doing. Um, it's got some tremendous um, SPL um, to it in clarity. One of the things that we do recommend, um, even in the DJ setting, this will do a nice job, you know, for a couple hundred people. Um, but if you're looking for that DJ sound, and um, let's go ahead and shut this off since we've got our recording captured and um, you know in the DJ realm so to speak that if you want that good moving solid bass you know that your crowd can dance to if you're doing 150 200 people you know on a fairly large dance floor um, with these guys we recommend coupling them with a, um, a dedicated sub either a 15 or an 18 and let these guys do what they need to do up in the upper frequency range um, above you know 80 90 hertz and let the subwoofers do what they need to do and do well um, from 90 all the way down maybe to you know 45 40, somewhere down in that area. Um, FBT makes a fantastic sub uh, in their subline, the, uh, the subline um, 118 SA, um, single 18, freaking amazing. So, um, and if you wanted to go to double 18s, um, you could just use one. And in their subline, the, uh, the subline 
218 SA, um, which we own a couple of those, um, for a double 18 sub, it's like I just, I'm still in awe of how much um, that pushes out um, as far as um, sonic, um, just SPL and sound. So um, that is the, um, the CS1000 from FBT. Um, this is part one, so we're going to do a part two and um, get into um, kind of showing you what this does hooked up to the Zoom, um, kind of in a, uh, a room setting. And, um, you know, t title that part two so that if you don't want to watch part two or you want to just do part one or just want to watch part two, um, that's up to you. But um, I thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions on the FBT line, um, they make a full line. So they make this series of speakers, tall, skinny stuff. Um, FBT has line arrays. They've got um, some of their column speakers that couple with larger subwoofers. They've got typical trap cabinets. Um, they've got some smaller powered speakers for doing speakers on a stick, um, breakout, um, playback. I mean, just a full spectrum, broad line of, um, of speakers, line array boxes. So if you've got any questions, get a hold of us. Um, it's, uh, their website is uh, FBTUSA, and then there's FBT.IT um, out of Italy that um, you can take a look at for a product. But give us a call or shoot us an email. Um, our contact information um, is in the links below. Um, telephone number is in Northern California, area code 209-832-8023. Uh, or you can email us at info at trinity, T-R-I-N-I-T-Y, prosound, P-R-O-S-O-U-N-D, dot com, all run together. And um, get a hold of us that way. Be happy to answer your questions, happy to take a phone call and answer your, any of your questions on any of the uh, product lines. We're dealers for over 50. Um, pro audio lines, mixers, cables, lighting, pro audio equipment, you name it, um, we can do it. Video equipment as well, projectors. Um, screens, all of that. So um, give us a call, give us a shout out. Again, thank you for watching. If you've subscribed, thank you for doing that. We're all, uh, we also have our own um, YouTube URL now, which I'll put a, uh, a link description here in the video of that. Um, so you can find us really easy on YouTube now. And uh, we posted that on our uh, Trinity Pro Sound um, Trinity Productions Facebook page as well. So follow us on Facebook. We got a lot of stuff, content that goes up there that sometimes we don't get onto YouTube. So again, thank you for watching and uh, we'll be posting some more videos soon. It is Trinity Productions, trinityprosound.com. Take care.